So for this project, we're just going to take a look at faux gravity. Uh, that's also known as spherical gravity, basically just walking around a sphere. Uh, so we have a couple objects that are spawned. That's the first script. Uh, it's just going to spawn them so that they're facing outward from the planet. Uh, then we're able to hover up and down and move around. And if we want to go to another planet, we're just going to hover up. So if you look on the left there, you can see we're moving up and up and up. Eventually, another planet is going to pull us in. And it just auto rotate, uh, rotates us so our feet are facing the ground again. So how this system works is it's basically once you're a certain distance away, it's just going to pick the nearest planet. But you could later modify that so that maybe each has a different gravitational pull based on its size or something. Just kind of a simple way of doing it. Okay, so all we're doing here is we have two lists of globes and then a list of prefabs. So for the spawner, we just click play and it's just going to cycle through and put that many objects and make sure they're facing outward. So just picking random globes to put them on. And then for our controller, it's basically just keeping us aligned with the planet. So every frame we're going to move forward and then we're going to rotate inward to the planet. So let's take a look at the spawner first. So keep in mind we have these two lists right here. And all the globes are is a sphere with a collider and a mesh renderer. And then I've just tagged it as globe and put it on a globe layer. Okay, so this is the script here. Uh, so just those two arrays, you can make those as big as you want. Just make sure it's the right amount of prefabs and globes. Uh, then we're just choosing a random count. Uh, I think I put 300 for this. So we're just going to loop through and put 300 objects, uh, so 300 random objects on random globes. And in order to do that, I'm just going to go through the function here. So the first two, we're just picking a random index between the length of the array. And then we are going to pick a spawn point. So what we're doing basically here is we want to find the globe. Uh, so these aren't at center, obviously. So we want to find a globe, find its center, pick a random outward direction, and then we want to go right to the edge, uh, right to the surface there, and that's where we want to spawn the object. So that's these three lines of code here. So we're starting out with the, uh, so we take our globe index, and that's just giving us that center core point. Uh, then we pick our random direction, so a random spherical direction, and that's just a normalized vector. Uh, then we're going to add our original point, so the center of the planet. And we are taking the scale, which is the radius. Uh, if you have a sphere, the scale is on the x, y, and z is going to also be the radius. And we are multiplying that by the direction. So basically, it's going to say which way it's going out, and then it's going to say how far it's going to go out. So it gets that edge point. OK, so once we've done that, we're going to get a rotation. Uh, so this rotation is so that it's facing outward. Um, otherwise, your prefabs are just going to spawn up and down. So that would be fine if it was right at the top here. But if you're at the bottom, your tree is going to go kind of through the globe, or it'll be sideways over here. So that's going to give the outward rotation. Uh, again, this is just taking two vectors, minusing them from each other, and normalizing it. And that'll give you kind of your rotation from the core to the outside. OK, so we just spawn it. Uh, nothing fancy there. And then we are just going to rotate it into place. So we're taking the original rotation, and we're trying to get to the spawn rotation, uh, which is this one up here. So that is from the center to the outside. Now keep in mind, we only have to do this once because we're just spawning a static object. The controller is going to be moving forward, so you want to be doing this every frame. But we'll get to that in a second. And then I like to just parent the object that we spawn to the globe uh, that it pertains to. So that way it's just a lot neater. You can drag the globe itself um, like that, and all the objects come with it. And they're all just parented inside. So nice and clean like that. OK, so that is our spawner script. Keep in mind, a lot of this is going to carry over to the controller. Uh, it's just doing it every frame instead of once. 
Okay, so just some basic camera stuff here. Uh, this doesn't really have anything to do with bow gravity, just setting up whatever your camera is. Uh, neither does the controller. Uh, the controller is just going to be going forward. Uh, then we're going to apply the rotation afterwards. So just a move speed, sprint speed, uh, some jump force. And the is grounded, that is whether or not we are within um, kind of normal gravity or if we're switching to another planet. So if we're not grounded, it knows that we're currently switching. So that's when you're kind of drifting away. So this is related to faux gravity. Uh, the hover gravity, that first variable, is going to be our normal up and down uh, once we're kind of aligned with the planet. Orbit gravity is how quick we're moving from one planet to another. And gravity let off is how far we have to go away before we get taken to another planet. So I'll just show that re real quick right here. So right now our character is grounded. Um, we're obviously sticking to this planet. Uh, then we're able to hover up and down. And that's just normal kind of hover gravity, so up and down. And then our let off point is right about here. And then it switches us over. So orbit gravity is pulling us in. And now we're back to grounded and just normal hover gravity. Okay, so that's what those are going to do. Um, just got some components here. Just the collider rigid body, uh, the camera. The orbit point for this controller is the, uh, the center of the planet that it's trying to go to. Um, so rather than have a planet pulling you in, you're basically pulling yourself into a certain transform. Okay, so again, these first two functions are just kind of normal character controls. Uh, there's nothing specific to faux gravity in here. Uh, just doing a normal camera rotation, the first person controller. And then the movement. Um, so here we have our is grounded. So as long as we're um, inside a sphere's gravity, we're just going to use this. So shift is just going to increase your move speed. Uh, holding down jump or space is going to make you go up and down. And then just a normal uh, transform move direction. So we're just going forward uh, times our movement speed and with our jump force as well. And we're just doing that transform dot translate. Okay, so in a normal game, if we were just on a flat plane, that controller would work fine. We'd move left and right and up and down when we jump. But since it's a sphere, uh, we just kind of go off the edge here. We'd keep going straight. So the next two functions are actually going to rotate us into place so that we're always rotated inward towards the planet, no matter where we are. And that gives it that feel that you're always on a flat surface, even if you're like on the bottom here. Okay, so that's our orbital pull. Again, we're getting two vectors, minusing them from each other. And that is just giving us that inward rotation. So let's say we're over here. Um, if we rotated like that, what that vector is going to give us is this rotation, so that we're facing into the globe. So it's taking the core, it's taking the point, and it's giving you that line, which is what you need. Okay, so once we have that, uh, as long as we're grounded, we are just going to stay within this planet. So it's going to rotate us inward so that we're facing feet down. And then what I've done here is as long as we're um, basically near the ground and we have jump, we're going to go up. Uh, otherwise, we're going to go down with hover gravity. And that one is just because the sphere collider or capsule collider is giving me some problems. So if you look at the actual controller, he's hovering just above the ground. Just a little space in there. So that's all that is. Um, especially with this because you're always rotating. It starts to go in or causes you problems. So I just added that in there. Okay. And otherwise, so let's say we've exceeded that orbital point and we're far out. It's going to start moving us towards a new planet. So that's this right here. So we're grounded, grounded, and not grounded. So now it's pulling us away. That's the other one. Okay, so that's what that's doing. 
uh, it's basically just going towards that other um, point with, and you're not rotating your character. So it'll keep whatever camera rotation you have. Okay, so change planet. This is what's actually gonna change. Uh, so I made a function here, distance between. What that is giving us is the distance between the controller and the edge of a sphere. So if you just input the distance between you and a sphere, it's gonna give you u to the core here. So that's this little gap here. Uh, whenever we use that function, that's all that's returning. Okay, so if the distance between you, and then I have a variable gravity let off, uh, so that's how far away you have to be from the planet before you're gonna switch planets. And assuming you are actually grounded, it's going to switch planets for you. So here we take the orbit point and we're just setting it equal to the closest planet. Um, so that's this one up here. So now our character is gonna be oriented towards a new globe and we're setting grounded to false. So that is gonna trigger that other type of orbital pull that's actually just gonna pull us towards the different planet. And lastly, I've added a feet to ground. Uh, so that's kind of taking us from our current rotation. And then we're just gonna fly away. And then just before we hit the surface, we're gonna actually rotate so that we're now facing inward like this to the new planet. So for that, you have to make sure you're not grounded. Um, and if we're not grounded, again, we're just getting that rotation direction. Uh, we're getting this distance to the surface of our new planet. So we want to see how far away we are from it. Okay. So if the distance is greater than 2 and less than 150, uh, I've just kind of made these up. Uh, so if you're in that buffer range, it's going to start to rotate you in. So that's this big monstrosity here. Um, what that is going to do is rotate you from whatever your current rotation is to the rotation that you should be facing uh, to the new planet. It's going to do it smoothly. And if the distance is less than two, it's just going to switch you to grounded. So now you're going back to the normal gravity type. And that'll also mean that you can switch to another planet now. Keep in mind, if you are greater than 150, it's just going to keep pulling you. Uh, so it's not actually rotating your character. It's just pulling you towards the planet. OK, so these are two custom functions here. Uh, so the closest planet is going to find, obviously, the closest planet to you. Um, so you just have two variables here. So you're trying to find the actual object, and then you want to know the distance. So the first thing you're going to do is cancel out your own globe. Uh, so you don't want to be finding that one because it is obviously the closest. And then you're going to find all the objects with the tag globe. And then just set your object back to have that tag again. So it's just going to basically omit your globe when it's trying to find the closest one. And then so you're just going to loop through them all. Um, and if it is the shortest distance, it's just going to update it here until you find the shortest one. Okay, so that is going to return you an object uh, as the shortest one. And this function here is the actual distance between planets. Um, so again, that's giving you the distance between your controller and the surface of the planet, which is good for registering uh, when you're about to hit a planet or how far away you are from one. And the reason I do it that way is because if this is scaled way, way up, you're going to want to know uh, the distance from there to there, you're not going to want to add in the whole radius because that'll be variable. Okay, uh, so yeah, you're just getting the radius, you're getting the uh, the core of the planet, and you're just going outward um, from the center uh, right out to the surface, and you're seeing how far that is. Uh, and then you're getting the distance between that outer point and the controller. So it's kind of like when we spawned the trees there, uh, we're starting at the center. Now we know the direction we want to go towards the controller. So out this way, uh, the radius is telling us how far to go. So we want to go here. And then we measure from here to the controller. So it's going to return us that final distance right there. OK, and then in update, we're just calling all those functions. And 
fixed update, we're just zeroing out the rigid body. Uh, so you can still collide into stuff, but it's not going to affect you for physics. I think I also turned, yeah, you want to make sure you turn gravity off uh, on your rigid body and freeze the rotation. Other than that, I think it's about it. Uh, I've set these stats here. Um, you can change most of these. Uh, so your move and sprint speed and stuff. Make sure you start out grounded when you start the game or you'll just float to the next planet. Uh, those are pretty good ones for hover and orbit gravity. And then we just have our things linked up. I don't actually think I use the collider, but I just have it there. Yeah, so just normal controller with a camera. Uh, nothing weird there. And yeah, so the globes here, you can see the tags. We have globe and not globe. Uh, so you're going to switch to not globe when you're trying to cancel out your globe. And I added on a layer there. I don't think I actually ended up using that. It was from a previous game. So yeah, so you can just walk around and just hover up and down and switch planets. That's about it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching.